In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at a great new product from Adobe, and it's called Adobe Spark Page. And what this does is it makes it easy and fun to create web pages, websites online for free. Basically, Adobe Spark Page makes creating a web page accessible to just about anyone. So some people might compare it to the new Google Sites, and maybe you've watched my recent video on that topic. But there are some differences between the two. As it says here on Adobe Spark page, it says create beautiful web stories in minutes. And so you can see that's the angle that Adobe is taking with this new product of Adobe Spark page. The angle they're taking is that it's for creating web stories. So let's look at how to get started creating these web pages or web stories, if you will. Basically, the first thing you need to do is go to spark.adobe.com and just click get started now. Now, Adobe Spark page is one of three products that Adobe has recently made available, and these are kind of linked products, basically. There's Adobe Spark Video, and you should watch my tutorial on that topic. There's Adobe Spark Page, which is what we're going to learn in this video. And then there's also Adobe Spark Post, which I'll show in a future tutorial. And all three of these are linked to Adobe Spark. But anyway, you can just go to spark.adobe.com, click Get Started Now, and simply sign up for an Adobe Spark account. The quickest and easiest way to do that is just click Sign In with Facebook or Google, and that will link your accounts, and you'll be signed in and ready to go, and you really won't need to remember a new password. For me, I decided it was better to just click Sign Up for Free, and I just put in my information here, clicked sign up, and now I have an Adobe ID that is separate from my Google and Facebook accounts. So either way, whatever you prefer, go ahead and get signed up, and then from then on you'll be able to just log in to your account. Alright, I am now signed in, and I'm able to create my Adobe Spark page. Now by default, once I've signed in, it shows me past projects that I've made with this account. It also shows some pics that it recommends for me to watch. Up at the top, there's another link to my projects. There's a link to the Inspiration Gallery where you can see different Adobe Spark projects. This includes Adobe Spark Page, Adobe Spark Video, and Adobe Spark Post projects. And you can see that they're labeled in the lower right corner. So this is kind of a way to learn about what is available and what is possible to create using Adobe Spark. But I would like to jump in and just create an Adobe Spark page. I'm going to click here on this plus sign. It takes me to a screen where I can choose which of the three options to create. And I'm going to go ahead and just click the plus sign underneath page. And Adobe Spark loads up for me an empty web page. And creating this web page, designing it, or this web story if you will, is as simple as just clicking where it says add a title to get started. So I just clicked. I'm going to call this South America. And this is going to be a web story or a web page about South America. And under the title, I can go ahead and click where it says add a subtitle. And I can put in maybe a nickname for South America. This is kind of a, a fun nickname of it. And that easily, I've got the beginnings of my web page. So the next step is to look down at the bottom of the page. There's a plus sign there. And what this does, this enables you to add a background image for your web page. I'll go ahead and click photo and you'll see that it opens up a panel at the right where I can tap into a Creative Cloud account, Lightroom or Dropbox account or Google Photos account. And each of these will bring in your photo libraries from those different accounts. So if you use Dropbox or Google Photos especially, those are two excellent options. You can just click tap into what you already have in those accounts, pull them in, and easily add them to your Adobe Spark pages. These other options are good too. And you can also upload a photo from your computer. But honestly, my favorite option here is just find photos. I'm going to click there. I'll type in South America, hit enter, and it comes up with several different options that I can choose from. I'll click on this one. That looks nice. I'm going to stick with that. Now, you'll see that it's a little bit blurry, but that's because it's just in the process of loading. In this case, it finishes loading. It looks nice. So I'm very happy with this. Now that I have that image in as a background, along with my title, I want you to see that as I scroll down the page, look what happens. Okay, so basically what's happening here is the image is scrolling at a different rate than the text. And this creates really a beautiful, very appealing effect as people are looking at and experiencing this web page. It's a very attractive, beautiful way to present this information and the photos. 
Now, as it says at the bottom of the page, scroll to start writing your story, and there's an arrow pointing down. So you just scroll down the page, and what's going to come next? As I go down the page, what's going to appear on this web page? Well, I could put a photo next, I could put some more text, I could put a button, video, photo grid, and glide show. We're going to look at each of these in turn. I'm going to start with photo, so I'll click on photo. And it remembers what I searched for most recently, and that's a good thing because I want to put in a map of South America. So I just click, it adds in that map, and maybe above that, maybe I'll put some text. So I just click on the plus sign again, click text, and I can type map of South America. I know, not very creative, but it does the job. There's my text, and it appears where I clicked the plus sign right if I had clicked the plus sign down here I could have added the text underneath but I wanted it to be at the top anyway so that's fine now if I regret how the text looks there's a couple of things I can do I could just click on the text or even click and drag to highlight either way you'll get some options that appear one of them is to change it to heading text there's heading one and then there's heading two so whichever you like best you can also turn it into a quotation type text which gives it italicized look and just changes the way it looks a little bit you also have bullet options and numbering you've got bold link italicize with link for example you could just click and highlight the text click hyperlink and create a link that would be clickable and would take the viewer to the website that you put there if you save it so there's really some good options just built right in here to the text editor that pops up when you click on the text that you've already written I'm gonna go with no numbering no bullets just heading text to I kind of like that look notice that I can center it make it justified left or right but I'm gonna stick with that. I think that's gonna look pretty good for me. All right, let's move on down the page. And next, I would like to add some buttons. So I'll click here where it says button. I can put in button text, and I'll just type in a couple of South American countries. Okay, we've got Peru. Now I would like the button to do something. I've put the text in for it, but what happens when they click on the Peru button? Basically, it will take them to a website, and the default here is example.com. So I need to find a good website to send people to when they click on the Peru button. So here's a website that looks kind of fun and interesting about Peru, and I'll just highlight the URL copy it and come back into Adobe Spark page, paste it in there, and I can decide to align the button how I want it to be aligned, and then I'll just click Save, and there's my button. Give me a minute to add two more buttons, and then we'll move on. Okay, wonderful. I've got three buttons. Each one takes you to a different web page on the internet, and I'll show you that a little bit later when we preview and share the finished page. Now it's time to add another kind of object onto my Adobe Spark page, and that is a video. Now when you click on video, a rectangle pops up where your video will be once you've embedded it, and notice that it says add an embedded video. Notice that it says you can bring that video from YouTube, Vimeo, or from Spark, Spark Video. And Spark Video is a great option. If you haven't watched my video on Spark Video, you need to do that because that will let you know what a great option this is to bring in the videos that you've made in Adobe Spark Video and put them inside of your Adobe Spark page. If I wanted to do that, how could I do it? I would just go here to the upper left. I could just click on the three horizontal lines. Then I would click on my projects. I would go to the video I want to link to and just click on the share button in the lower left corner. There is the link that I need to copy. And then I just X out of this and jump back into my Adobe Spark web page. And now I can click to add a new video. I'll just paste in the link to my Adobe Spark video click save and it's going to pull in the video project that I made in the past and it puts it right there inside my Adobe Spark page. Now in addition to video from Adobe Spark you can also bring in videos from YouTube. You just go to YouTube, find the video that you want to link to and get the URL for that video or the link to that video. Copy and paste it in here, save it, and it'll bring in the YouTube video. Works almost the same way with Vimeo if you'd like to use that. So it's really quite easy to bring in video content onto your Adobe Spark pages. 
We also though, in addition to video, we have two other great multimedia objects that we can bring onto the Adobe Spark pages. One is a photo grid. When you click on photo grid, it opens up again this panel at the right where you can tap into all of these different services to bring in photos. I just click find photos and I put in the topic that I want pictures of and it brings up a lot of results typically in most cases. And so I'm just clicking on a few of these to add them in and people will be able to get a sense of South America uh, based upon these photos. Now you'll notice what it's doing. This is a photo grid. It's kind of like a collage really almost. It just automatically puts the photos in in different shapes and sizes so that they fit together well on the page. Now if you want to you can click on a particular photo. It doesn't let you drag it but if you click on the photo you can click to move it backward or forward in the photo grid. You can make it be a larger photo or a smaller photo so you can kind of help control what the finished photo grid is going to look like but if you don't do that Adobe Spark page will do it for you. It will decide which ones are bigger, which ones are smaller, what's the order but you do have some control if you would like to have it. When you're done, just click save and now I have a beautiful photo grid as part of my Adobe Spark page. So that's how you make photo grids. Really easy and nice looking. Finally, the last type of object that you can add to the Adobe Spark page is one of my favorite options. It's called a glide show. And what this is, a glide show is like a slideshow, but the photos will appear one right after the other as you kind of zoom or scroll through them. And it looks pretty neat. Let's take a look at a, an example. So I'm going to click the plus sign to add a glide show. And in this case, I'm going to search for Chile and get some photos of Chile. And I'm not going to spend too much time choosing these photos, but I'm just going to click through and select a few different scenes from Chile. Okay, let's say I'm satisfied with that. Similar to with the photo grid, if you're not happy with the order that they're in, you could click on a particular photo and reorder them. You can also replace the photo or delete it if you need to. I'm pretty happy with this though. I'll click save. And let's take a look at how this glide show works. Basically, when I scroll down the web page and get to the glide show, look what happens. It reveals my first picture and then it zooms in just a little bit on the picture and then it fades and turns into the second picture and then it zooms in on that and it becomes the third and the fourth and the fifth picture. So this is a glide show. Now you may notice this rectangular block that's moving, you know, as I scroll it's moving up or down on the page on the screen. So what is that? Well what this is, this is for labeling the images. So for putting text and I can just click that plus sign and I say it's for labeling. That's how I use it for adding text to the pictures but you could add another photo. You could have a photo within a photo basically and uh, the photo appears and moves and scrolls up while the photo in the background is there. Like I say more often than not I don't use it for a photo within a photo. I just click that plus sign and I add in text and just put in a caption basically to go with the photo. Now you could do more than one thing. I could have text and a video to go with it, whatever you want to do. But this is just a really beautiful and handy object that I can put into my pages. So that's the glide show. Now if you regret the way that Adobe Spark page is focusing on the photo, let's say they're, they're focusing in on the wrong part of the photo, what you can do is just click on the photo and then click focal point and you can choose what you want the focal point of the image to be. And I just drag this to the focal point and you can see what's happening. It's changing the emphasis of this photo. It's moving and changing what is included and what is excluded from this photo. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll click save and I have just adjusted that photo. So those are some of the tools that you have at your disposal as you're creating glide shows and editing them. All right. So I am just about done with this beautiful Adobe Spark page about South America. But before I save this and publish it, I want to click here on themes because it does have some great options for themes. You can go through and choose storybook if you want and that changes the look and feel of your page. You could choose trek, nightcap. There's just all of these different themes that you can choose from as you are deciding what you want your finished website to look like. 
So make sure you look through those to make sure you don't want to change them. I kind of like Trek, so I'm going to go with that and X out of the themes panel. And I'm happy with this. I'm ready to preview it and share it with the world. So to preview, you just click preview and it looks almost the same as what you've just been looking at as you built the page. But now, because it's in preview mode, everything works the way you would expect it to. The buttons, when you click on a button, it actually works. It takes you to the website that it's linked to, okay? And as you scroll down, you can watch the video and it will actually play. So preview mode gives you a true sense of what your web page is going to look like and how it's going to be experienced by the viewer. All right, when you're done previewing, you can just X out of that window and then click share to share this and to make sure that others can access it. So here on this page, I'm expected to pick a category for this page that I've created, but I'll just go with travel. You can also edit the author. By default, it's just your name, but you can go in and change it up if you want to. There's an option here for being featured on the Adobe Spark website, and then there's some other options that you have. And when you click on that, as of right now, the only real option that I have is photo credits. All of those photos that I pulled from within Adobe Spark page, they are photos taken by photographers, by people out there, and they're willing to share them with the world. But if you want to give photo credits, you can do that. And you can change it up if you want to. You can put text of your own in there or just leave the default. All right, the last option is create link. When you click create link, it gives you a public link for your page and you can click on it, copy it, paste it anywhere you want and people will be able to get to your Adobe Spark page by clicking that link. You can also embed your web page onto some other service or into some other website. You can email it, you can post it to Twitter or Facebook. So I hope that you've enjoyed learning about Adobe Spark page. I think it's a great option, especially for the classroom, but really anyone in the world can hop online and create an Adobe Spark page for free. And as you can see, very easily using this great service. In the near future, I'll be doing a tutorial on Adobe Spark Post. So I hope you'll watch that one as well to learn about the third tool in the Adobe Spark suite. And if you haven't already watched my Adobe Spark video tutorial, you really need to do that. But Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and look for new uploads at least every Monday.